Hey guys, welcome back. It's Coco. Welcome here bringing your best tips, tricks, and tutorials to make having fun affordable. And in today's video, we are doing a Halloween theme event decor. We're going to focus on oranges, black, white, um, maybe some purple and green in there um, just to give it a little pop of color. Not too many people do Halloween themed baby showers, but I had a Halloween themed baby shower for one of my children. So I thought considering the time of year, this would probably be a good time to do it. If you guys are looking forward to making a couple DIYs, um, a balloon garland, a mini balloon garland, and then um, a full on candy table set up for any Halloween theme event, then stay tuned and I'll see you guys on the other side. First thing we have to do is spray paint our um, spray paint our unfinished wood pieces that are gonna go inside our lantern. Using, what is this? Uh, satin Canyon Black. We are basically going to create, we're going to keep the lights in here, we're going to keep the frame. We're just going to replace this portion right here um, and then add a silhouette of, um, of some Halloween themed um, shapes. And um, But we're going to keep the lights. Now if you don't have something like this in your home, um, there are some DIYs that I've seen where you can um, make your own lantern. For a craft today, this, we are gonna replace this glass. So what I'm gonna do is, ooh, you just have to tug and pull it out. Our, um, frame as a template, but if you didn't have that you would use um, whatever size thing you can Find to cut it down to the size that you need. And I probably should have a pencil, but I don't And I probably should have a cutting board, but I don't <laughs> so <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do And so we're just gonna cut four of these glue in our blank side and then also there's a shiny side to this and then there's a muted side so I would keep the muted side um, facing out gluing on the bottom putting glue on the bottom so then that way right where the where it's gonna stick and then be careful if you're um, your lantern is pre-lit I would um, just make sure that you don't get glue on your lights dots on the side like that three corner dots look how cool that is oh right okay so let's start it. I always blow up my bigger ones first. I did want to practice in this video is tying just the necks together. So one thing I do is as far as my my technique is I tie the necks together but then when I to make quads but then I tie all the quads together with a 260 so in this tutorial I want wanted to experiment with just tying the necks together as a whole and only using the 260 to attach the garland to my stand so I'm gonna do that now tie all the necks together and see how long or how dynamic I can make the garland and then um, and then from there we'll attach it to our frame. Thank you. 
your garland to your base. You want to start in the middle and then work your way out. So I'm going to do that and then uh, start setting up the candy table. Next, we're going to attach all of our little babies. Okay, so before I keep going with the setup, I just wanted to show you guys all the um, vessels that I have available to put candy in. Now you may have, um, you may not have a lot of vessels as me because I go a little overboard when it comes to um, candy dishes and candy trays, but a lot of the stuff um, is from the dollar store. Like this was in the plant section at the dollar store. This, These were from the Dollar Tree. These were from the Dollar Tree. Um, these were from the Dollar Tree. So you don't, these are from the Dollar Tree also. So you don't have to have um, anything too flashy and expensive. You can use anything clear to hold your candy for your candy table. It's really all about um, levels. And so as I set up this table, I will show you guys what I'm talking about and kind of walk you through that. Put your candy together, um, candy table together which with at least six to ten um, types of candy or at least groups of candy and dishes and then when you are ready to decorate your table um, you can do little things like how I added the um, bones to here how I added the bones in here as a filler um, just to kind of give it a little more dimension or you can even um, add something like this in the middle of like a charger plate and then that kind of makes it a little more fun too. Um, you always want to think about symmetry um, because symmetry is what really helps people focus their eyes on everything. So I always like to buy two of everything and then have, um, have a balance of um, the same number of dishes so if I have this kind of dish on one side with suckers then I'm gonna have the same kind of dish on the other side with suckers as well um, and then you can kind of mix it up and bring like unique pieces like this to the forefront um, to add a little more dimension or a piece like this um, I made this in one of my other videos and you can add that to the front and that kind of adds a little dimension as well um, and then also they have at Michael's these split candy dishes so you can fill this with one side of one color type of candy and then fill the other side with another color and then it kind of gives you know a two uh, it gives it a little more dynamic look to your table so um, there's that and then these I found at the Dollar Tree so these were just um just pumpkins um they're fallen pumpkins that i put you know on either side and then of course we made this diy earlier so um you really want to right now everything's really flat and level so as many pedestal um dishes that you could find i recommend using those and then if you can't find pedestal dishes you can um just prop up some of your candy so um, I have like props like this you can use crates to kind of do something like this All right prop up the candy so that way adding that level makes it higher and then it looks a little more unique adds a little more level of interest and then you just move your candy around like that so Okay, so as always, guys, I like to come back at the... As always, I like to come after the final shot and give you guys a couple tips um, for when you're 
doing your event um, and things that I've realized while uh, filming this video. One, always have your batteries charged for your camera um, because if you are using a camera or even your phone, if you're using your phone, um, have it charged because I ran out of battery and then my backup battery wasn't charged. So, <laughs> Um, it delayed me like an hour or two and so I kind of lost a little sunlight um, or the position of the sun changed so then um, in that final shot it kind of made the lighting a little weird um, filming outside so there's that number two is um, I really did like I think I said it before in the video but I really did like the sturdiness of tying all the balloons together instead of using the 260 or even fishing line to tie the line of the garland together so I think I'm going to continue doing that because it felt very sturdy and very strong and I think it's because of the tension between all the balloon necks being tied together and kind of like like this that it created this tension which was like this like force that made the garland feel really really strong now I didn't even use that many balloons I think I used about maybe a dozen 12 or a dozen five inch balloons and then um, and then all the orange and black balloons were 12 inch so that was probably about 20 maybe 25 12 inch balloons and then um, and then there was two like black um, balloons on either end that I think were 18 18 inch um, so if you are like if you don't have a lot of balloons to make a full garland which is usually like 10 to 12 feet you can always do a mini garland like I did and just have it across this top and then I use tassel uh, I cut a tassel garland and drape that on the side and that, that was the purple and black that you saw on the side so super simple it doesn't have to be complicated and then the third thing uh, that I learned in doing this is um, when I made the lantern I feel like I cut out my um, chopping board pieces too small and then um, I didn't like how the how the wood cutout was on the um, how the how I I didn't like how the wood piece that I attached to the chopping board, I didn't like how that looked. Um, so I think next time I may, I may put that on the outside of the chopping board because on the inside you could see where I put the glue, the hot glue, and I didn't think it would show like that because it's clear hot glue. So normally the clear hot glue dries clear, so why would you see it? But I think because it was, um, the opacity of the chopping board made it, you know, you can see where I put the three dots of glue. So I didn't like that. But overall, I think everything looked great. I don't know how you feel, but you guys let me know in the comments below. So hit that like button, comment below, subscribe, stay crafty, and I'll see you guys next time.